I beat Mega Man 5 in one sitting without taking any damage. We're going to cover the rules, the routing, the strategy for the run, and review the winning run itself. This video is a summary of the entire journey for this game. You can find the live attempts on the channel and the no damage completion VOD in this video's description. These are the rules for this challenge. No damage, no deaths, no glitches. This was performed by me in one sitting, in real time, without the use of any emulator tools or re-recordings. The real deal. This was also performed on an AV Famicom in this game's original release. Mega Man 5 has a handful of glitches, including arrow zips to bypass some screens, and most notably the refight skip, which is a technique used to skip 7 out of 8 of this game's refights in Wily Stage 3. All of these techniques are not allowed for this challenge. Mega Man 5 is the fifth game in the classic series, can you believe that? This game is largely a continuation of the same engine of Mega Man 4 with small differences at most. It might be easy to look at these games on the NES and think that they all perform similarly, but in reality each game has a lot of nuance. And for example, Mega Man 1's engine is functionally completely different than Mega Man 3's, which is different than Mega Man 5's, and Mega Man 6 is doing its own weird thing over there. Anyway, Mega Man 4 and 5 arguably have the most similar engines, and Mega Man 5's builds upon it with a few new mechanics. The Charge Mega Buster was upgraded in this game, and it is arguably the best Charge Buster in the entire series with its gigantic hitbox and ability to cleave through enemies. Rush is back, this time with the upgraded New Rush Coil, which turns him into a spring-like platform, a fan favorite. Super Arrow appears in this game as a powerful utility weapon. It can be used as a decent damaging attack, but it's primarily used for fast and clever movement to traverse screens. It gets a lot of use in speedruns, and it gets a fair amount of use in this challenge too. Beat will be unlocked as part of this route. Beat is unlocked by collecting his letters in each stage, and none of them require specific weapons to get. Beat launches a very powerful auto-tracking attack. He doesn't actually get a lot of use in this route for this challenge, but whenever he is needed, he's an invaluable asset. The routing for Mega Man 5 is fairly simple. Super Arrow is so powerful as a utility weapon that having it for the majority of the game makes sense, and Starman is easily defeated with Mega Buster only, so Starman should be done relatively early on. It would have been reasonable to do Starman first, but I actually decided to do Waveman first. Waveman's stage has a short intro then is mostly a boat section. During the intro to the stage, there are no enemies, so the only sub-weapon that could possibly help is Charge Kick, and that's not really necessary. While on the boat, the only weapon available is the boat's buster. Is that a buster? In other words, sub-weapons don't have much value in this stage, so it makes sense to do it early. Further, using Waveman's weakness charge kick against him is a very bad idea for avoiding taking damage because of how Waveman's own water wave will break charge kick's invincibility, so he must be fought with the buster. On top of that, getting an auto scroller out of the way early on is the best, so all in it makes a lot of sense to start in Waveman. Afterwards, the route follows weakness order and Starman is second, which as discussed before rewards Super Arrow. Afterwards, the order is Gravity, Gyro, then Crystal, and M-Tank is retrieved in Crystal Man's stage and saved for later. The rest of the robots are Napalm, Stone, and Charge. At first, I thought Charge Man to be one of the most complex fights, so having him last seemed a little dangerous, but it turns out that with some practice he wasn't so bad, and it made most sense to have him last in the robot's order. The route from here just follows through the castle stages. Because of how often the game gives you M-Tanks in both the Darkman and Wily castles, weapon energy management is not a huge concern, but there are still considerations around when to get the benefit out of certain types of ammo before refilling, most notably using gravity hold and super arrow efficiently before using an M-Tank. Let's get into the run. Our journey starts in Waveman stage. There are no enemies on the first few screens, so without charge kick it's mostly about being patient with the steam spouts and pendulum enemies. No super error to skip the bubbles here, so after a ride up, it's off to the auto-scroller. This auto-scroller is not particularly complicated, but it's important to have a systematic game plan to avoid taking any damage. Special weapons can't be used here either. The mini-boss Octoper 0A is defeated fairly simply by baiting its projectile attacks with well-timed jumps. The first letter is collected during the second part of the auto-scroller, then it's off to the boss. As mentioned before, Wayman is a dangerous fight with charge kick, so this fight is done with the Mega Buster only. 
Waveman will fire a water wave, then shoot a trident projectile and jump to Mega Man's location and repeat. However, if the player is standing still at the beginning of each pattern, Waveman will never use a water wave directly where Mega Man is standing, so careful movement will avoid any unfair randomness from his pattern. He's still somewhat difficult though, arguably one of the harder fights because of the trident projectile coming out very quickly. Next up is Starman stage. Water Wave will not help much in the stage itself, so it's Mega Buster only until the end. The first screen has asteroids that can snipe the player, but generally it's not a problem with some safe play. The second screen is worth clearing slowly, as the bounders and B bitter enemies can catch you by surprise. The next letter is obtained, and a fairly straightforward path through the end is taken. The space met screen can get out of hand very quickly, so it's important to both move and fire the same way every time. Starman's fight is very easy. He opens with a jump towards Mega Man's position. Afterwards, by timing a water wave attack as he is about to jump, it's possible to get both rid of his shield and force him to do nothing and come down, all while damaging him. The next stage is Gravity Man stage, full of upside down sections. This stage is a good example of a stage where moving consistently and efficiently, even if not very fast, is very important. For example, the Suzy G enemies will fire if they are left in range for too long, but they are otherwise not a threat. It's just important to keep having a game plan and to keep moving in this kind of stage. Super Arrow gets its first usage here. It's fairly common in the Robot Master stages to have one or two screens maximize a Super Arrow like this. Gravity Man himself is a scripted fight. I developed this very safe strategy that lets the player stand still at the beginning of the fight for a while and only have to slide right and left once. Well-timed star shields take out the boss. Gravity Hold is the reward and it's an amazing screen clearing weapon that will get a lot of use. Gyro Man is up afterwards. Super Arrow gets a whole bunch of usage in the first half, bypassing a lot of the screens entirely, and a sub-weapon refill helps extend it to the second long horizontal screen. Placing Super Arrows well definitely takes some practice and it can be risky at times, but the benefit is huge and once you get comfortable with placing them, it's really not so difficult. The second half of the stage is mostly done with Buster. This final screen has a Tande All enemy that is taken out with a clever charge shot during a screen scroll. Gyro Man is one of the easiest fights. You just have to respect his invincibility frames and not use Gravity Hold too much in short succession. Gyro Attack is a fairly powerful sub-weapon that gets good usage from here that comes from Gyro Man. Crystal Man's stage starts off with some Puka Pucker enemies that are easily cleared with Mega Buster. The third screen is a big stretch cleared perfectly with Super Arrow, otherwise this screen would be pretty difficult with the Crystal Droppers. The room with Crystal Joes is tackled with a lot of precision and respect. Going too fast here and being careless can result in disaster. Gravity Hold is helpful against the come on enemies to avoid a laggy situation. The M tank is collected here, and specific movement with gyro attack is used to both clear the mouse bail enemies and to avoid getting hit from the sweeper enemy Fujin's projectile. Afterwards, more Gravity Hold paves the way down to the boss, and the final power muscler goes down to just 4 hits from gyro attack. Crystal Man is an interesting fight. He always opens with a dangerous 4 times crystal attack that bounces around the screen. By using Star Shield to get rid of one of the projectiles, the fight becomes safer at the start. Crystal Man will always jump 3 times after his opening pattern without attacking, then he will randomly start firing after jumping. Once the opening pattern is handled, the rest of the fight is easily fought with his weakness. Off to Napalm Man stage. The Tiger Sumatran enemies are powerful foes with an interesting AI quirk. They specifically will react to the player pressing the B button. They also will just attack if you get too close to them. By charging Buster before having them appear on screen, the Sumatrans can be defeated by specifically releasing the B button and not pressing it. It's very important to respect them because they have aggressive AI. Speaking of respect, make sure to visit the cubby on the first screen. The long horizontal screen in the middle of this stage was the source of a few hits throughout this challenge. It's possible to do some aggressive super arrow placements in this room, but a slight mistake can be devastating. I decided on a half arrow, half slower pace strategy that worked out well. The second half of this stage is a little difficult with the jet bomb and power muscler enemies, but Crystal Eye is fairly powerful and helps out near the end. Napalm Man has an AI routine for both long and short distance attacks. He starts with his long distance attack, then the idea is to bait his short distance attack over and over. 
It's a simple fight after dodging the first few missiles, but it's important to not get greedy and to play it safe to avoid any stray damage. Next up is Stone Man Stage, a complicated and long stage. On screen 1, I tried many variations on dealing with the Met Mommy enemies, but in the end I decided to simply rush Jet over it. The Met Mommy enemies are a huge pain, and you can play it safe with the Buster and keep your distance, but it's still slow. Stone Man Stage has a large variety of ways to navigate the rooms with weapons. Gravity Hold is very nice for some of the narrower corridors with the Met Mommy enemies. Super Arrow is a huge benefit on one of the longer screens, and Rush Jet gets some usage too. The stage is an ultimate patient stage, just need to play well and not overreach. Stone Man himself is the happiest robot on this side of Monsteropolis, but is ultimately a very easy fight. And some argue that Power Stone is the best weapon in the series. Finally, we're at Charge Man stage. After taking out the first Remba Kun enemy, just enough super arrow is preserved for the third screen, and the arrow placement is fairly safe after taking out two of the Metal K1000s. The infamous Chicken Room goes down to Crystal Eye alone, which shows its viability as a strong weapon. It deals 2 damage as opposed to the Mega Buster's 1 damage, and since most enemies have invincibility frames in this game, Crystal Eye is just enough damage to clear things quickly without needing a charge buster shot. The final horizontal screen goes down to both Crystal Eye and Charge Buster and is fairly safe. Timing a slide under the Metal K1000's projectile is a little scary, but with familiarity and practice it's generally not too hard. This is a good example of having speedrun this game before, giving me a lot of help. In other Mega Man games I might not opt to do this kind of movement, but it was never a problem in this run for me to do this kind of movement. Charge Man himself is a very particular kind of fight. He opens the fight with a charge, then he will walk for a set amount of time. At the end of his first walking cycle, he can either do an aggressive charge or he can do his steam and coal attack. These have completely different reaction timings, so covering for both untelegraphed outcomes is hard. My strategy was to use Rush Jet to basically create a platform to react to what he does, then either jump over him if he charges or pivot. In most cases he will use the steam and coal attack, but you must be ready for either. If he does use this attack, Star Shield will help protect against the coals. After his coal attack, if you are positioned far enough away from him, he will charge at you. Then it starts all over again. It just takes practice to understand the flow of it all. Also shoutouts to Power Stone, which has such a long cooldown that pressing pause to cancel out the Power Stone and reuse it is faster and more efficient in this challenge's context. With 8 robots down, it's off to the castle stages. We have one M tank that we got from Crystal Man, and we'll be getting quite a few M tanks throughout these castle stages. We also have all letters of beat, so beat is now available to us as a weapon. Darkman 1 stage is up first, and it starts off with a long screen with Sumatran and Tandeal enemies. Slow and patient play is rewarded, and in some instances you can despawn the Tandeal enemies. Again, it's important to not trigger the Sumatran enemies into their aggressive AI. After a climb up the final sections with Rush Jet, the final rounder enemies need to be taken out safely with Water Wave. It's worth mentioning how many regular enemies have a variety of weaknesses and resistances in this game, especially this one. Darkman 1 is on treads, and is the kind of fight that is easy until it gets out of control, then it can be disastrous. The idea is to lock him in place by forcing him to stop and shoot after he takes damage, but you have to wait enough time between hits, even more than his iframes, so it's a delicate balance of waiting just enough time between hits but not too much. Water Wave thankfully has a few projectiles so the window is at least a little lenient for one of them to connect. Darkman 2's stage is next. After showcasing the raw power of New Rush Coil, this stage with the Puka Peli and Metal K1000 enemies is fairly scary if done too fast or any movement mistakes are made. I opted to use Gravity Hold here a few times to help with screen clearing and Gravity Hold also gets usage on the Bombier enemies in the Conveyor Room. The rest of this stage is handled mostly with Buster and isn't so dangerous, but once again on the final screens, please respect the Sumatrans. Darkman 2 is a very simple fight. He just walks to where you are with his shield, 
but he changes speed at a little less than halfway through his HP pool. I chose to use Rush Jet to safely jump over him, because although the jump over him isn't tough, it's also just dangerous enough that mistiming just a little bit can be real bad. I felt confident enough with Rush Jet to use it consistently. The Widowmaker Stage, Darkman 3. The first screen features Apache Joe, one of the more dangerous enemies in this game. After many iterations of strategies, I settled on using B to track this enemy down. B is an interesting weapon, but he won't attack until he is by Mega Man's side first, so it's important to summon him early before spawning the Apache Joes. For whatever reason, even though most enemies have invincibility frames in this game, B does have a fast double attack on Apache Joes and defeats them quickly. The grounded Subail enemies are easy to deal with, if you deal with them before they start moving. This super arrow screen got me a few times, and over time I opted for a half super arrow strategy to play it more safe. The big snake block room is also traversed with super arrow. By firing one super arrow, landing on it, then firing another, the position is perfect for defeating the enemy along the way and riding the top super arrow to the end. An M tank is used and more super arrow is used to traverse the next few sections, nicely cleaning up a fairly dangerous stage. Darkman 3 is one of the scarier fights, mostly because his opening pattern has a bunch of permutations. He will either jump at the start or walk towards Mega Man, and it's definitely more dangerous if he jumps. Thankfully, Star Shield helps in a pinch for either of his projectiles, and when Mega Man is close enough to Darkman 3, the boss will always do the same attack and he stops moving, so it's really just about dealing with the opening, then baiting his attacks with precision. Darkman 4, the end of the first set of castles, after safely traversing the tower crumbling section, Proto Man shows up. I know what you're thinking, hello? Did you just take damage? It's true, you take cutscene damage in this game. But maybe you can think of the L tank as a loophole tank, and we in fact never took damage. Anyways, Darkman 4 is arguably the scariest fight in this game. He only does one of two patterns, then jumps and repeats, but the attacks come out very fast. My strategy is to watch his shield between phases and look for a visual cue when his shield passes behind him, and then preemptively jump to cover both options. From there, I pivot based on what he does. You want to be fairly close to him to jump over his shield attack, but also far enough away to dodge the projectile attack. It's a very close quarters reactionary kind of fight. Afterwards, it turns out, in fact, that Wily was behind the scheme. Kinda crazy when you think about it. Off to Wily 1, which opens with a somewhat claustrophobic area with toss machines. Just traversing slowly and spawning the Gearies smartly helps. I used to use Super Arrow on this screen, but you can get sniped by the toss machines on the bottom, so I opted for a slower and safer room clear. Afterwards, one more Super Arrow on the Fujin screen, and the Crusher section is handled with Buster and a lot of patience. This chicken enemy, Coco, is kinda scary, but Buster takes it out. The screen features a sweet trick shot with Crystal Eye to stay safe, then Gravity Hold deals with a narrow corridor in the next section. This stretch was optimized over time to save some Gravity Hold for the beginning of the next stage. Big Pets is probably the second hardest fight after Darkman 4. This fight requires you to manage the platforms and get hits in, but it's very easy to lose track of both platforms and the small pets that come down in random positions. It's very important to play intelligently and keep track of good timing cycles to avoid being put in a bad situation at the top of the screen. It goes well here and I move on. Wily 2 is the last major platforming section. For fun, I use Power Stone on this screen to deal with the Hira Rion 427 enemies. It is the best weapon, so I have to use it at some point, right? While underwater in this game, Mega Man cannot jump out of a slide, just like in Mega Man 4, so it's very important to be aware of that. The swim metals come out fast with their projectiles, so whenever I use Buster Shots, I am ready to press pause to switch to Gravity Hold at any time but it went well here and I properly used Gravity Hold for the final platforms. Buster sufficiently deals with the next few screens, then another fan favorite, Napalm Bomb, blows up the Coco and Power Muscler enemies. Circ Ring Q9 is the next boss. This boss has some randomness around when it opens its side hatches, but the ball projectiles are fairly consistent and you generally can move in a basic way to avoid getting hit by them. 
In its second phase, it comes down on both sides, but it's easy to score a few hits and do the whole fight in two cycles safely. It's important to use an M tank before finishing this fight so that the M tank in the next stage spawns. Wily 3 The Refights, a classically difficult stage in this sort of challenge. After a short opening hallway, I opt to do Waveman first because of how tight the timing can be on dodging his untelegraphed trident projectiles. After this fight, the rest of the refights are fairly straightforward. Stone Man was not very happy again, sadly. Napalm Man's fight can be a little scary to dodge with his first attack pattern, but it's more dealing with nerves management rather than the fight itself being hard. Charge Man gave me a fairly aggressive charge pattern where Rush Jet truly showed its helpfulness. After the refights, Wily Press blocks the way. Wily Press is a very safe and slow fight. I opt to use the rest of my Star Shield, then fill up a final M tank to replenish Star Shield, Gravity Hold, and Super Arrow. It's important to route this out to have at least a few uses of Star Shield for the final boss fight, but with this strategy it works out perfectly with the ammo. It's off to the final stage, Wily 4. I use a 3 jump patented technique to deal with the big Dachone enemies. The idea is to fire charge buster shots higher than you might think to connect to its hurt box. Wily Machine in this game has 3 attacks, either 3 times missiles, a ball attack with 2 trajectories, or a wind suck attack. There's a very odd quirk with the missiles attack. If you block the first missile with a star shield, the next two do not spawn at all, but the game's internal timer runs as if they would spawn. In other words, it's a perfect opportunity to get in three super arrow attacks very safely. In this fight, I use this technique twice to get in many safe attacks and dodge the other patterns. It's important to not get greedy in this fight, since some combinations of his attacks can put you in a very narrow position. The final boss fight is a classic Wily Capsule pattern, where he teleports around. His attack is quite easy to deal with in this game though, and it's always the same attack at a different position. Beat gets used again, but it's a complicated fight. The general idea is to have Beat track Wily after getting one hit, but not hit him twice. A track is when Beat is following around Wily between patterns while he is invulnerable. Speedrunners will play aggressively and go for two hits in a track. I opted for one hit in a track. Whenever Beat failed to track, I used this opportunity to use Gravity Hold, which flashes the screen and nicely tells the player where the Wily spawn is going to be, when used at the right time. Sometimes I switch to Mega Buster on a low spawn to deal 6 damage instead of 4 on a cycle. This is a fairly fun fight, and with some practice it's not very dangerous, and after Beat lands the final blow, it's another win. Mega Man 5 was the 10th game I did for the No Damage Challenge, which means that Mega Man 1 through 9, including Rockman and Forte, are all finished. The only two left are Mega Man 10 and 11. This game was a fun one. I had previous speedrunning experience with this one, and it's my favorite of the NES Mega Man games. It has a very solid engine, and it's just fun to move around in this game. This was undeniably one of the easier games for this kind of challenge, and it took me just as long as Mega Man 4 did. But it still takes patience and practice in order to overcome this kind of challenge, and this game was no exception. Thanks for watching. If you like this style of content, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a comment below. See you for the next one.